How the heck are you everybody? I'm Fastidious and welcome to my channel. Today we are doing 219, Gear Aid 2, Stage 19. You can see Power of Dominance is off, and this is going to be what I think is the definitive free-to-play comp. So it is going to be all epics and under, except for one exception, that is Volca. Volca will not be on the field at all. I'll deploy her at the very end just to speed up when we're just killing the boss. Uh, but she is strictly here just because you need her Awaken 1 to make this comp work. You need her here to get the Allies Revival Time minus 25%. Uh, that is her only purpose. You cannot use a team this free-to-play friendly, at least to my knowledge from my, all my testing, and I've done hours and hours, I mean dozens of hours, testing this stage out. I think this is as free-to-play as it gets, as budget as it gets. You cannot make this happen without Volca's A1 passive ability. So she is the one exception. However, all of the damage, all of that good stuff will be coming from our epics and our rare heroes. You can see we're actually bringing three rare heroes. Uh, and actually, none of these are rare uh, epics. You know, Olog is the rarest here. However, he's 100% free to play. You get him from phase one when you reach the Void Rift. Uh, even Void Rift normal, you will get him. Uh, Livian is a fusible. Uh, unfortunately, some people won't get Dolores, but her drop rate isn't that low. Maul, the same thing. Uh, drop rate not that low. You'll see my Maul is A4. However, he absolutely does not need A4. This would work at A0. Uh, A4 helps the extra crit rate, the extra penetration. Uh, but absolutely, you can make him work with no awakenings. Baron as well. Uh, my Baron is A4. This is just because I've been playing the game for a while and I pull a lot. Uh, Baron would work 100% fine at A0. He would even work at level 50, 5 stars. Uh, we'll get into all those specifics. Vortex, my Vortex is A5. He would work at A0. And I could easily bring Isolde, who I pulled recently, but I'm choosing to bring Dagna because she does the job fine. Of course, we have Decimus and we have Narvi. I think that covers all of our heroes. Guys, let's get into this fastidious fastidious Alrighty, guys first off you'll see i've raised my head up a bit uh that's because i think i'll do this with all technical kind of strategy guides where like the little minute things are so essential i'll do this in all those type of guides this is because it will make a lot of sense once the battle starts i want everyone to clearly be able to see the quick cast that's going on below me when i'm triggering the ultimates so just get used to it this is how it's going to be from now on uh, I also wanted to be on this screen so you can see Power of Dominance is disabled. Let's hop into battle. So of course, you know, we just had the Vanquisher achievements come in, so I really want to show off really easy, free-to-play, epics and under teams. I said I would do that this week. I'm very excited to show you guys all the stuff I've been doing behind the scenes. However, this also, this guide specifically, you know, we're only bringing Volca and then the rest are just epics and rares. This guide specifically is also, I think, just going to be the definitive strategy guide that I can put out when it comes to Gear Aid 2, stages 19 through 21. Uh, all the strategies I, I use here are exactly what I believe to be the optimal strategies for clearing this content as easily as possible. Uh, the reason I'm focusing on 19 is because I th feel like this is the first place people are getting stuck. And quite frankly, the build I have on these heroes, particularly Maul, is not going to be enough for me to go and clear 20 and 21. I have been able to clear 20 with this comp, but it took my like absolute best gear on Maul. That's not so realistic. So I want to focus on this 219 comp here that I believe is pretty accessible. I will say my gear is still pretty good. I mean, it still is a stage 19 dungeon, uh, stage 19 gear raid, and I do just have pretty good gear on my account at this point. That being said, I tried to temper it down as much as I possibly could. We're going to get into all the builds, all the gear, all the artifacts, all that good stuff at the end. Uh, but for now, let's head right into battle. So guys, this is our squad. Let's get right into it. You can already get your cursor, or if you're playing on mobile, your finger over to the left, because our first thing is we're going to drop down Narvi. Uh, you can see we drop her on this tile and facing to the right. Uh, this left lane is where our first two enemies are going to come down from, and we're going to leave this tile open uh, for the enemies to kind of bunch up in so Narvi can get a couple hits out, and that's going to make sure she generates enough rage regen based off of attack to get not one trigger of her ult off, but two. So two uses of her ultimate. This is going to ensure we have more than enough costs to be successful in this battle. As you see now, as we prepare to deploy our DPS, which is a Maul, 
He costs 22, right? This is not an Awaken 5 Maul that would only cost 17. He's very expensive, so just extra motivation to get as much cost going into this battle as possible. Uh, in general, right, let's quickly actually get Dolores down here behind Maul. Let me pause it. In general, you just want as much cost for this strategy, this kind of Volca-based deploy, retreat, deploy, retreat strategy. Uh, just gonna make your life a lot better and make the strategy a lot more successful. You might also be wondering, why are we using Dolores? Can Maul not just kill these first two enemies by himself? He actually totally can. However, he can't do it fast enough to make sure we're set up for success with the next next waves of enemies uh, that we need him for. So it's important that we use Dolores to make sure he can kill everyone as quickly as possible. So Narvi's ready with our ultimate now. We trigger that. Now you get ready with our first tank. We'll use Baron since he's not one of our main tanks. Our main tanks are going to be Olog and then Livian. Make sure you put him in the far back tile because you can see Narvi's now going to get out some hits on these... Uh, these big bad guys, and that's going to make sure she generates extra rage so she can comfortably get off that second trigger of her ultimate. We can throw it on 2x for a second. We're waiting for Maul and Dolores to load up. You see, Maul is ready first, but we have to trigger Dolores first to make sure he has inspiration to easily wipe those guys. Now you can already start picking everyone up. Pick up Dolores, pick up Maul, and we just leave Narvi down, and you'll see the golem's going to come out. He's going to shriek. We'll, before he does that, we'll be able to trigger the second ultimate of Narvi and pick her up. That should leave us with exactly 80 cost, I believe, uh, from my testing when he does that shriek. So here comes Narvi, pretty comfy, you can see. We can trigger her and pick her up before this even starts counting down. And you'll see when he finally gets the shriek off, should be just about 80 cost. So let's see, there's the Shriek and there's the 80, absolutely lovely. Now we're ready for the next phase. So here come the running men. Let me pause it again really quickly. So I've obviously put out many, many pieces of content, a lot of guides on Gear A2. This can kind of stand not only just as a cool budget comp and stuff like that, but in terms of strategy, this is like my definitive strategy guide now for late game Gear Raid 2 when it comes to stage 19, 20, and 21. All my other guides I'm very proud of, but that was before the reskin. So here with the reskin, the animations are slightly different. You know, before we had the rock guys and the roly poliolis, now we kind of have these wooden looking rock guys. And instead of the roly poliolis, we have the running men. So now you guys can see how I deal with the new animations, and this can really just stand as this is the exact strategy I use all the time for takeovers for 19 20 and 21 so you're getting a nice taste of it a nice breakdown of it right now get ready with your decimus throw on two x for one second so now we get on one x he goes for his slams the print of golem now he goes for the big slam when he goes up you can get ready to place decimus he slams down you're gonna see a flash of light once you see the flash of light that's when you let go. Shout out to many people who tipped me off to this visual cue. Uh, they mentioned the flashlight in the comments. Makes it really easy to know when to let go of him. Now, uh, easy visual cue I figured out. You can, when this guy gets close, click on him. The running man throws his head back. Once he throws his head back and this white number appears, that 496, that's when you can pick Decimus up. Now get ready with your main tank. I'm gonna use Olog and we're gonna drop him right on top of these two guys. So when they're in this last tile, uh, right before the portal, we can just drop him right on top, they die, and we place our Vortex and our Maul. Uh, so let me pause it really quickly. You gotta place Vortex first, then Maul, because they're these the guys that throw the rocks are always gonna target your first place platform unit first, but you also gotta get Maul out as soon as possible. So boom Vortex, boom Maul, right? That's the way to do it, uh, to make sure you're gonna get that DPS as soon as possible, because we still need to kill this wave as fast as possible, so we're ready for the final wave that we need uh, wave of enemies and mobs that we need Vortex and Dolores for. You also, I'll just keep it paused for a second, you'll see I pointed Vortex up. Olog, built well, can completely keep himself alive. He doesn't need any healing. Our platform guys won't get uh, targeted because they're going to target Vortex. And then you'll see we'll place Livian in just one moment. She will be fine. She has some self-healing, and she actually puts out so many stuns. Uh, she doesn't take that much damage. So really, uh, Vortex is there just to take the aggro of the guys that are about to come out and throw the rocks. Uh, and then just to keep healing himself. He's kind of like a distraction, a decoy. So you'll see we're on 0.1 seconds on Dolores. So as soon as I click play, I'm going to deploy Dolores. There she goes. And we can get Livian down right here. So you can see Vortex, no one is in this healing zone but him. So as these rock guys come out and start throwing rocks, he can just keep healing himself. You see, he takes some hits and boom, healing himself. Easy peasy. Now, basically, this is everything we need for this third phase. Let these guys start coming. And we just keep an eye on our Dolores and Maul. Make sure you trigger Dolores first. Wait till these guys are in the zone. Now we trigger Maul, and we should already be able to start picking everyone up. Easy peasy. Look how look at that damage. Amazing. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Lovely. And now we wait for the Shriek. This is going to be the fourth phase now. 
Here comes the Shriek. As soon as he has the Shriek, we can already place Baron and Decimus. Uh, so with other stuff, when, when we put them down, like you saw with the flash of light kind of thing from the first time we dropped Decimus, there's a lot of timing to it. With this one, not so much because the way the timing works with the, the primitive golem slamming the floor with the earth shake, uh, it's actually happening when these guys are already getting hit by the running men. So there's no special timing. You see, they get hit and then he's going to start the earth shake. So there's no special timing to that. So you can just get them down as soon as he finishes his shriek. Now I like to pick up on the left side first. Same thing as we did before. You click, wait till this guy throws his head back. Throw your head back, buddy. There you go. See that number? Pick up. I like to do the left side first. Wait a beat. Now you can do the right side. And we'll get ready with Narvi. You can just drop her right on top of these guys. And let's wait for Dagna. You can just drop her right on top of these guys. Excellent. Now we're just waiting for everyone to come back. Here comes our Olog. Uh, and let's just keep an eye. It looks like Maul and Vortex are about to be ready. So very nice timing. So here comes Vortex. Here comes Maul. Let's pick up Dagna. We don't need her. Livian's almost ready. And Dolores is almost ready. Get Dolores down. There is Livian. You can see this time, uh, this time Olog's actually in Vortex's range. But we're like geared well enough that Vortex can throw a little healing towards Olog. Olog won't need much because he'll have shields up the whole time. He'll get some healing from his artifact. We'll break that down later. He's wearing North's will. And Vortex still will be able to focus mostly on himself. So you see how you're gonna see how tight this is gonna be as all these enemies march out in making sure we're able to get Dolores and uh, Maul's ultimates off at the right time. Uh, but it should be a-okay. It's just very tight, but we should get it going, no problem. So we'll keep it on one X here. You see these guys are getting up into the 80s now. You wait, you wait, you wait. As soon as they are ready, these guys are all about to enter into Maul's hit, hit zone. Excellent. Now let's wait. Let's wait one more second. Okay, now trigger. Now we can start picking people up. Excellent. And we can pick everyone up. Perfect. So you can see that we handled it nice and easy. Absolutely great. Uh, now we wait for Baron. There was the Shriek. Now we can get Baron down to this drop. So with the other drop, I said the Earthshake came after uh, that that uh, the running men made contact with Baron and with Decimus. This time that's not going to be the case. So let him start doing his Earthshake. And now we're going to time it right when I see this guy entering this tile and he throws that his left arm, the arm on our right forward. That's when I'm going to drop Decimus. This is the last phase before the boss fight. Now we wait, we wait, and the same procedure here, right? So we go on one X, we wait till this guy hits, wait till he throws his head back, we wait till that white number, that 496 or whatever appears, 496,000 I believe. There we go, we, we wait a beat, now we can pick up Baron 2, and we're gonna drop our same girls, all right? So we still haven't even used Volca once yet, she's just there for her passive. So drop, and now for the final phase, the boss phase, we drop there, Dagna, okay, we can pick Dagna up, we don't need her. Now this guy comes marching, get ready with Decimus, Keep it on 1x if you want to be safe. You can place Decimus here. He's going to take one hit. Now you wait for him to take one more hit. See, he's got a little shield. That's from actually a, one of the reworked new uh, epic artifacts that I like a lot. He takes one more hit. Now we pick him up. Now this guy's going to march forward. He's going to turn red. Come on, turn red, buddy. Get it? He got me scared there for a second. Wait till he turns off from red. So he would have kept slamming if we had people down. We don't. So now he's going to kind of just forget about that. He's going to turn blue again. Now you can place uh, Olog. You can place Maul here. You can place Dolores up top. You can place Vortex here. Uh, and now we're going to place, uh, what you want, Volca here. And you're going to see, why did I place uh, Dolores here? This is so she's going to be able to buff Volca and uh, Maul. Doesn't matter. It's just going to make the end of the fight a little faster. And now we just wait, we wait, we wait. You can place Livian right on this square as well. I mean, Livian has a touch of damage. You can see we're starting to melt this boss away. I'm getting excited. You can 1x this really quick. You see Maul and Dolores are going to be ready before Volca. Don't get excited and do them first. You can already trigger Dolores, but you have to wait on Maul because we need to get those uh, debuffs out from Volca just to make it as fast as possible. You see, it's going pretty smooth. Trigger and trigger. Easy peasy, delete button, there you go. People, absolutely lovely. And there you have it. That is going to be a really nice performance. I'm not gonna save this. Uh, I mean, we can save it, it's 219, I don't care. I'm, I'm farming 221 now. Let's check the damage, it's not gonna matter too much as you're gonna see. Uh, almost everything from Maul. You can see a touch of damage from Volca at the end just to speed things along. You see Livian had a bit, but really it's just the Maul show and he's leaning on Dolores. That is going to be how that battle shakes out, folks. Uh, took me a couple tries to break it down as cleanly as possible. You can see power dominance was off. 
Uh, nice, good going. Let's actually check what's the BP. We did it with 402 BP. Would have been nice to get that under 400, but you guys get it. Super budget squad. Uh, unfortunately, we do need Volca A1, but keep in mind she is 100% free to play. You'll get her from the Volca quests, the Volca missions, and you'll get her Soul Stone around between day 35 and 45. Uh, if you're wanting to do this before then, you're going to have to need another strategy. Otherwise, all epics, all rares, and then one plug-and-play, super free-to-play hero. Uh, and I didn't even need her at the end there. As you saw, uh, she just made it go slightly faster. Especially, like, once you have power dominance, you really don't need to deploy her. She's just to, to speed up the, the fight for when you're going to keep farming it. Um, all right, so let's go look at... Actually, probably better we just do it from this screen. I'll just show you everyone's gear. Uh, you can see here... Uh, yeah, so there's 19. Uh, let's just start, I guess, with Maul. Maul's probably wearing our best gear. See, he's got a couple ancient pieces. I made sure not to do any premium sets, guys. So when I say premium sets, I mean the sets that you get from 19, 20, 21. Wouldn't be a nice 19 guide if I was being like, here's some 19 gear. Uh, you can see, so we're using a Night Terror set. We went crit damage, we went crit damage, we went attack. Uh, his attack is pretty low. It's under 10,000. I actually think 9,500 or higher is fine as long as you're getting some nice crit rate and some nice crit damage. And that's because you're going to get a big boost in attack from Dolores. You'll probably need a bit more attack uh, for 20 and 21. Maybe think more to the 10.5 to 11.5 range. But you can see with only 9,900 attack, it is fine. Uh, 282 crit damage might seem a lot, but when you're using two crit damage main pieces, it's fine. You could totally do this broken set as well. I just figure, I think the Night Terrorist set deserves a bit more love. You can see as he's building up the Rage to use his ultimate, he lands a couple crits, uh, and he's going to keep landing them. We're basically ensuring that we'll have that 25% bonus damage. Here you can see we just went Calamity. Not the best piece in the world here, right? A nice attack bonus roll, decent crit roll, and then here, pretty good piece. One of my better pieces. So, uh... Some nice attack bonus, some nice crit rate, some nice attack speed, but nothing too crazy. For Artifact, I kept it really easy. The new Keen Wisdom, aka Ancestral Teachings. I hate that they changed all the names on these artifacts, but it is what it is. This one is maxed out. Uh, you could comfortably do this at plus 19, just get that 16%. I mean, with this build, we could have probably had it with 8%. It still would have worked. There you go. He is max skilled. Uh, for Awakenings, he's Awakened 4. None of them matter. Uh, this one's for Freeze from his ultimate. When he does his ultimate, he kills everyone anyway. Uh, this is an extra crit rate. It just helps make the build a little easier, but that 5% crit rate was not the difference. Uh, inflict Slow. We don't need Slow for this. And then, of course, Penetration. It helps, but we didn't need it. Our damage was way, way past that point. Uh, I've done, I did this actually before I got, when I had A3 mall, I had already been testing this strategy out and it worked A-OK. -okay. I've done this strategy for people's accounts. Obviously, we're on my own now, but I've done it on takeover accounts. I've done it with A0 mall, no problem. So yeah, make sure maybe you have the best, the good enough gear. You could definitely do worse gear than this. I would presume you could do it with nine and a half attack, 9,500 9, attack, and 250% crit damage. That's what I think is probably around the break point. Uh, you will want some attack speed. Uh, that isn't, that is, you know, this doesn't need to be this high at 315. It really is just so he gets enough attack out, n enough attacks out so he can get the ult up, especially for that third uh, wave that you're using him on. Uh, but there, there you go. Pretty good. We can actually go from this screen. You can see uh, I actually had an invigoration set on Vortex that I broke up because I wanted to make sure we weren't using any premium sets. But you can see just going for HP bonus on all of this stuff, uh, going for some attack speed, some, uh, some heal effect. This isn't the exact build I would use on my Vortex in general. Actually, I can just show you that really quickly now. But here you go, F a very healthy HP. Uh, this is the amount of HP you're going to want for 221. Uh, you can probably get away with like 38k HP for 19, but when you get to 21, you definitely need at least 42. I would shoot for 45k. Um, definitely helps to have his Awakened 2, I believe it is. Uh, you get another 1200 HP. Very good stuff. Uh, but you can see you just went Life Force on the left. All in all, came out to 239 attack speed, nothing special, 59 heal effect, nothing special, and very good HP. What I actually run him in for most content now is I have this piece on him. I use this because I like to get inspo on him for the more late endgame content, content that I use to help some of my other heroes. So you can see we take a hit on the HP, but we're still over 40k, but I do like him really fast. So in general, this is just the way I like to have my Vortex built. Uh, there you go there. Let's keep moving right along. Here's Baron. Like I said, he would work totally fine at uh, five stars. Uh, we went Guardian set here, and then we just were hunting for HP and defense. Just click through all of that really quickly. You can see we got him to 94k HP, 
and we got him to where's his defense 54 defense bit low on the defense it really doesn't matter though he's mostly there just like a souped up decimus right we're taking advantage of his unyielding i do have this maxed out so it lasts for eight seconds this is basically unkillable for eight seconds uh and i do have him uh a3 uh, so this can last 11 seconds. However, this works totally fine at six seconds. From the takeovers I've done, five seconds is really, really tight. With five seconds, you can kind of switch him in uh, Decimus's role, assuming you've maxed out Decimus's skills, which you absolutely have to do. Uh, but you need at least six seconds, I'd say, for the, the way I was using him here. You don't need the fully maxed out build like I have. Um, there is Baron. Here's my Livian. Pretty good build on her. You see totally broken set. Then life force. I'll just click through the gear. You guys can pause it if you want. Uh, you can see living has really high base stats. So 92k HP. Very nice. 6800 defense. Very nice. Uh, ooh, let me show the artifacts as well. Uh, Vortex was in an orb of euphoria. But keep in mind, this doesn't matter. It's only really buffing him on deployment because he's the only one in his own range. I guess except for when Olag was there at the end. It does help maybe a bit at the end to kill the boss. But you don't need orb of euphoria. Uh, I like North's Glory a lot as well. I've used this. I actually used this when I beat 221, I believe. That was the artifact I had on him. Uh, what else do we have here? Is there anyone else I missed? Maul, you saw the Ancestral Teachings. Oh, now they call it not Orb of Euphoria. Now it's a Euphoric Orb. Oh, so cool. Uh, here we go. On Baron, I just have a basic Bastion Ring, a.k.a. Olog's Wall. Uh, same thing here. A more souped up one, but a level one one would have worked fine as well. On Olog, I have a maxed out North's Will. North's Will, even base level, would be fine. The only difference is instead of restoring 15%, it's 10%. 10% is more than enough, but this is the one I have because I use it a lot. I use Olog in very late game content, so if you've got it, why not max it out? Uh, here you go. You can see we went a Asclep uh, uh, Sclepius. Sclep Sclepius, so hard to say all the time for me. But the heal effect we don't care about, the extra 10% HP is nice. You can see just hunting for HP and defense, the same thing. Ooh, I did have, sorry guys, I did have Immortal Warrior on him. I did not need it. You saw he was very comfortably alive. So that's my bad for using one premium set there. Uh, there you go, 90k HP, 7700 defense, very good. I'd say anything over 80k defense uh, and 6,000, 6, uh, 80k HP and 6k defense, that's what you're shooting for. That's enough. He had the North's Will, as you saw, uh, and make sure that his uh, his Silver Shield, shield the auto passive, is maxed out. Uh, let's go right along. Here's my Dolores. I tore her build up a bit too. She normally isn't an Invig set. Uh, I took a piece off there. You can see, and I, she also normally is in Warlord. I changed this to Calamity. You can just see we're just hunting for attack, attack, attack. Really doesn't matter. Uh, a little Rage Regen, I guess, if you can get it, but it doesn't matter too much. See, I had her just under 12k attack. My normal build's like 12.5. I'd say anything over 11.5 is going to be good. 11 might still work, depending on the build you have on your Maul or whomever your DPS is. And she also is in a Keen Wisdom, aka Maxed Out Ancestral Teachings. Uh, this is the best in slot artifact for Dolores. You see, we didn't use Laurel here, uh, something I wanted to do and show off. I think that covers it uh, for all our epics. Let's go down to our rares now. Uh, Autumn is in a, oh, I didn't use Autumn, excuse me, that was for a different video I was making. Uh, here, this is the. This is what I was talking about. They renamed it, I don't remember what it used to be called, but this one I really like. I had this on Narvi as well, the Medal of Fortitude. Basically, whenever you're first attacked, you get a shield, and this is really, really helpful. It's nice for Desmus, it's really helpful for Narvi. This ensures that when you place her, she doesn't get one shot by one of them, and then the other guy gets through. She gets one, she would get one shot by one of them, it triggers the shield, then the other one gets hit. They both make contact, they both collapse. That's what made that so so easy um on dagna we have the same thing really really nice i'll show you their stats right now they really don't matter i mean their gear and stats you can see rapidity set i highly suggest make sure you save at least two rapidity sets guys and then here i just hunted for like flat hp on the main stat some hp and then big flat hp as well you can see it doesn't matter he dies right away anyway but there are the stats if you're interested and again i really like this medal of fortitude uh, for Narvi, uh, it's just getting her in a Mana Spring set and some attack speed. Uh, this is going to ensure that she gets the ult up twice. You see, I didn't even go too crazy on the attack speed. Uh, pretty fine build, 294, very attainable. Uh, just getting her that plus three Rage Regen auto, that is going to be the difference. And make sure with all these rares, guys, they are max skilled. Narvi, you need the Adventurous and the Encourage maxed out. And here you need Defiance maxed out for 
for uh, Decimus. I will say for Dagna, it doesn't matter. I did max kill her just because until recently she was my only uh, lord for the Northerners. I only very recently got a Solda. But you can see totally broken here. Really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting that Medal of Fortitude to make it really easy to make sure she can she can kill those two guys. Uh, I'll just click through very quickly just so we're being thorough. There you go. And I think that about covers it. I guess I just have to show you Volca. Did I miss anyone else? No, I think it's just gonna be Volca. Volca doesn't matter. Uh, I put her in a Scarlet Hunt. There's no bleed here just to have some stats on her. Uh, you can see that I did quick equip, literally. Uh, so 29.5% crit, it's nothing. I, they just put her an Angelus Wrath set on her. So I guess technically that's a premium set. I literally just quick equipped before the battle started. You saw she really doesn't do anything. Um, just, it helps to, I mean, she sped the boss fight up by probably one second, maybe two seconds. She really doesn't matter. Uh, here are her stats. Uh, but yeah, she's, it's all about with Volca getting her A1, allies revival time minus 25%. This comp could not work without that, so don't get that twisted. All in all, guys, I hope I was very thorough. I really hope you guys appreciate this as like what I think is about as thorough and clean and budget a guide that you could possibly see for late game gear aid 2. There you go, epics and rares only featuring Volca A1 for that passive. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Fastidious. If you like my stuff, like it. If you want to see more guides like this, let me know in the comments. If this helps you, I love hearing when people are like, oh my god, your guide is how I beat it. That makes it all feel worth it. Uh, subscribe. We just passed 7k. Thank you guys so much. Share it with your mother, and I'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.